Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children or for Any Age. We're so excited over these lessons on Hyatt. It has always been one of my children that I have taught their favorites. And there's so many wonderful, wonderful stories that are true missionary stories. And when we're finished with this this week and next week, you're going to say that this is your favorite also. But we're going to read about Abraham today because this is a little Arab girl, and we're going to read what God's Word says about the Arabs and about the Jews, and what God said He was going to do, because Abraham is the father of the Jews and the father of the Arabs, and God loves them the same. There is no respecter of persons. So for us to understand what is happening in these lessons, we must understand what God's Word says, and God's Word is the only true Word. So we're in chapter 17 of Genesis. When, he was, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared unto him and said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between thee, me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him. Now we're going to see that God's word says, As for me, now this is verse 4 of Genesis 17. Behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Now we have all of the I wills here that he's going to do. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between thee me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. So we see that the land of Israel was given to Abraham for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God, and God keeps His promise. And then, for Ishmael to be a nation, we need to read seven, chapter 17 of Genesis, verse 20. And as for Ishmael, now see, God loves them all the same. I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Ishmael is the father of the Arabs, and Isaac is the father of the Jews. And God has multiplied them. They have more land than the Jews, and they have all the oil. So God keeps his promise. So there is not any need for them to hate one another because God loves every person the same. 
As we go to these lessons and learn about the Arabs, we are to pray for them as well as the Jews. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise thy marvelous name. We thank thee that the Spirit of God is abiding, present with each of us that is thy child. The abiding presence of God. To know thy perfect will for each of us is to love one another as thou hast loved each of us. By this shall all men know ye are my disciples, when you have love one for another. We pray for the little Arab children today, wherever they are, that we will be busy giving out the word of God to them as well as all the other people in this world. We pray for their salvation today. We pray that thou will take this hatred from the hearts of people today for any person. Give us thy perfect love and help us to be busy serving thee in spirit and in truth and being obedient to what thou hast called us to do to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So we can see today, as we have learned, that we are to love every person. We're not to look upon any person in any other way except love, the way God has commanded us to. So we have seen with this story with this little Arab girl that her father would go to the mosque and call for prayer five times a day, and sometimes it says three times a day. So it's just according to where they were, they would be called to go and to pr ask to be pray. And they prayed to a God that they called Ali. And Mohammed is his prophet. Now I'm going to give you some truths about Mohammed. Mohammed was born 570 years after the birth of Christ. At the age of 40, he went into the mountains and he said that the angel Gabriel spoke to him and gave him these words that he wrote in the Quran. And this is the Quran that the Arabs and the Muslims believe is the true word. But this was written by man. Now, Mohammed was 40 years old when this happened in the mountains. He went and he said, now there is absolutely no way that he could have got any message from Gabriel because since Christ came and died, there has been no message from anyone except what is in this book. For anyone that tells you that they've had a message from God, and if it's not in God's Word, because the Bible is God's Word, then it is not from Him. It's not from God. So we know that the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her she was going to have a child. The angel Gabriel came to Zacharias and told him he was going to have John the Baptist. But this is in the Bible. Mohammed is not written in the Bible. His name is not in the Bible. And he was born in 570 A.D. His father died six months before he was born. His mother died two when he was two months old. His grandfather and his grandmother raised him. And he said that he was to be a prophet, that the angel Gabriel said he was to be a prophet of peace. Now we can understand in these lessons that anyone that hates believers like the Muslims do, this is not from God's Word because God's Word says we're to love one another. We're not to hate anyone. And then also that when they pray, he lived in a community where there were Jews and they prayed, of course, to the one true and living God. And he saw believers and he could, 
And even the Arabs, he said, they cheated and lied. And he couldn't believe what the Jews believed in their God. He couldn't believe what the Christians were supposed to be living by faith. And he couldn't believe the Arab people. So here he was a confused young man. And remember, when he was 40 years old, he, this man could not even write when he was supposed to have seen this vision. He couldn't even read when he was supposed to have had this vision. And we, we know this happened in Mecca, that is the city, the holy city where they go to pray. Now this is a true story about this man. And we must know that the Quran means writings. And we must know that this actually happened and this is what they believe that he was only a prophet and that Jesus was only a prophet. But we're going to find out as we come to these lessons that they're going to learn in this village that Jesus is more than a prophet. And the little girl Hyatt is going to learn this. In fact, she's already learning because she has a friend, Muna. Now this is one of the things that everybody that's listening that's a true child of God must understand, that we are called to give out the truth. The Word of God is the truth. And if we're not doing that, we're not obeying God because the people that do not know these truths, it's our responsibility to give it out and to pray for those that have never heard. So we saw how Hyde's father even burned the building down of Muna's father because he was a Christian. He burned the building down because he was a Christian. So we know that he was going to beat Hyatt because she'd been listening to the Bible, the stories from the Bible. And God sent an earthquake. You see, God wants his word to be given out. And he can do great and mighty things, which we're going to learn in this lesson. So after the earthquake, they found out that the sheik that they obeyed lived in the mosque and he was hurt. The top, the tower came off of the mosque and had fallen on his house and he was badly hurt. And we saw how Muna's father had a sister that was a nurse and she wanted to take him to her home to care for him. And he said, she, he is not going to your home. She said, I can care for him better at my home because he is very hurt, very bad. So he finally agreed for him to go. So afterwards, little Hyatt and Muna were so concerned because every time they got together, they wanted to know how the sheik was. And Hyatt was so concerned because she said, if he dies, you will be blamed because her father had said, if he dies, you will be in trouble. And she said, I remember when I got you in trouble before when you gave me one of your father's booklets and you had to leave town. And I don't want you to get in trouble now. I don't want anything to happen to the sheik. So every time they got together, she asked, how is he? And she would only say, he is still very, very ill. And so Hyatt's father knew something was wrong. He didn't like it because they would not let him come to their house and see him. His mind was confused and they didn't want the Muslims to see him like this because he knew that this would really disturb them and confuse them that he was so sick. So Hyatt one day, she was ordered Remember, she hated the second wife. They can have four wives if they can afford them. And she, the first wife was always ordering her around to do all of the work and her mother. And she didn't like this at all. So one day her mother was doing the cooking and she told Hyatt 
to serve the refreshments because her father had some important people that she was supposed to serve. And while she was serving, she heard them say, I think they're holding the sheik prisoner. We must go and rescue him. So Hyatt knew something bad was going to happen. So she went to her mother and she said, Mother, may I go to Muna's house? She said, but will you help me wash the dishes first? She said, because the first wife told me I must do the dishes. She said, you go to Muna's house. She knew what the men had said. You go and warn them because if you don't warn them, if the sheep dies, they're going to be in trouble. One of the most important things that happened is they would let her still be friends with Muna, although she was a Christian. And this was the best thing that had ever happened to her. So her mother said, I will do the dishes and you go and tell them. She went, knocked on the door, and they said, what are you doing here so late? She said, my father is going to come and rescue the sheik. He thinks you're holding him prisoner because you won't let him come to see what is happening. They're going to come and rescue him. So she, they prayed. And while they prayed, they said, maybe this is the way that we have of showing them how sick the sheik is and what a miracle God has done when he heals him. So while they were talking and praying, the sheik asked for Nader. And while she was there, Hyatt said, to them, I must go back home. They will miss me. And he said, but we will send our son with you. He can walk you home and you can slip in the back door and we will let him knock on the door and tell them that the sheik wants to see him. Oh, this was so exciting for her. And they walked home. She went inside. They didn't even know because the men that were important, the men in uh, in the village that had great authority, did, they were so busy with them, they had not missed her out of the house. So they, her brother knocked on the door and they told him that the sheik was wanting to see him. So here comes little Hyatt in and said, Father, can I go with you? And he said, yes. So this was so exciting. And when they came, they came to the house and they came in and he said to him, Nader, he said, where am I? And what am I doing? What happened to me? And he said, there was an earthquake and you were hurt very badly. And we brought you to the home of, and he was just ready to tell him where he was. And then he lost his mind again. He became confused. And he said, I want my mother and my father. Where is my mother and my father? And this really confused Nader, Hyatt's dad. He said, what have you done to him? You've given him medicine and put him under your spell. And the doctor, of course, Muna's father's sister said, we have not done anything except give him medicine that will help him. And besides, he knew you when you first came. You see, his mind is confused because of the head injury that he had. And we are praying that God will perform a miracle and heal him. Your God cannot heal him. If he is healed, Ollie will heal him. And the, he said, we must take him away to our home. And Muna's father knew what to say. God is so good. He gives us spiritual wisdom, spiritual discernment to answer every person. When we recognize the abiding presence of God 
and that we're wholly committed to him and that we're depending upon God for every word that is spoken, that we will have the mind of Christ and the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that's when we trust God, he gives us wisdom to know what to say, even to our enemy. So he said, if you want to help the sheik, what you must do is to get some men to repair his home. And then when he is better, we will take him to his home where he can be cared for by his servant and he will be better off at his home. Mr. Nader couldn't say anything. He was so shocked that they would say this and that they were concerned about him. So sure enough, he got all right to go to his home. They did all they could for him and they were praying that God would heal him. And he told them before he left, if he was healed, Ollie would heal him, not their God. And so he went, and it was months after this. At times, he would still think he was a little boy wanting his mother and father. And then, after this, a few months, he was all right. And what a blessing this was to Muna and her family and to Hyde. So one day, when they were together, Muna and Hyde again, they started talking about what would, had happened and how God had healed the sheep. And she believed that. Oh, she said, oh, Muna, I wish I knew more about God. I really believe that it was your God that healed him. And she said, you know, I really hate father's second wife. She said, but you can't hate. Hating is sin. She said, but she orders me around all the time. She does everything that I don't want her to do. And she, my mother is sick all the time. She doesn't sleep well. And she's tired all the time because she does all the work. And father's second wife doesn't do anything. All she does is order us around. And Nader is always spying on me. She said, my mother said that if your mother would receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, that she could have peace and joy even if the second wife is in the house. And she said, Hyatt, why don't you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior? He will take all that hate from you, and you won't hate Nader, and you won't hate the second wife. She said, do you remember Aunt Mary? She's coming back to my house, and we're going to have Bible lessons again. Oh, I love Aunt Mary. I will come and hear the lessons. Aunt Mary came. She came and she taught these girls and she taught the word and they were so excited and she taught something different than she had ever heard before. She taught that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that he loved her. Now she had remembered this Bible verse, for God so loved the world. And she couldn't understand this kind of love because the Muslims only have fear, they don't have love. There is no love when you hate someone. So she remembered this, and after class, she talked to Aunt Mary. And Aunt Mary, she said, do you know that your name means life? Hyatt means life. And if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, he will give you eternal life and you will be able to go to heaven when you die. Oh, I know I'm already going to heaven. If I do enough good things, then I'm going to heaven. That's what the Muslim law says. She said, Hyatt, the Quran was written by a man. The Bible is God's word. And God's word says that you, as a child, of, as a child, must know this Bible verse. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then she said, you 
are in darkness. You are in darkness. And you are a child of the devil. And you are a child of darkness because Satan's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. And you must be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. So, she said, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And you know what we have taught you, what she had learned, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that means you, and that means your father. Now today, she said, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? She said, I do. Do you believe he died for you? She said, I do. And now she said, I can believe. I believe that he died for me. And she had taught her the word of God that he had gone back to heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. She taught the word of God, what Jesus said before he went back to heaven. This was her lesson this day. And when she heard these truths, she knew. Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. You see, he had told his disciples that he was going back to heaven and that he was going to come again. Now, we just read that. So she said, today you can become a child of God by believing. It is believing in the blood, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. She said, I believe, I believe, I want to receive the Lord Jesus. She knelt down and received the Lord Jesus. And when they were awakened, opened their eyes, here was Nader standing in the door, her little brother spying on her once again. And she knew she was in trouble this time. She saw him standing there, but he had not been there long enough to hear her except the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. He said, Hyde, if you will give me some candy, I won't tell father where I saw you. The second wife's been looking for you. She wants you to go to the, my uncle's, our uncle's house and get some bread for some special people that are coming to our house. When you find out next week what's going to happen to this little girl because she obeyed the Lord and went to church with Muna and her father found out because her little brother was spying on her once again. You're going to love this next week. You're going to want to call your neighbors in because this is the most exciting part of this lesson. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returned.